In this video, I'm going to show you how the renovation Excel spreadsheets work. So my parents are finally renovating their 1980s house. It is long overdue. Um, they have already done the bathroom and I created a spreadsheet um, for that. So if you're only interested in a bathroom reno, I'll include the link down below. Basically looks like this. Um, however, now they are touching other areas of the house and doing bits and pieces here and there. So I needed um, some way to organize it all. And I wanted to be able to total everything by room and then also the total like renovation budget. So that is what this um, spreadsheet is for here. This is like the summary page. So you can populate all of these tabs, which are all the different room zones, the color corresponds. I love color coding in rainbow, so hence the nice colors. So this one here, this blue color, color for external tab one so you can find the breakdown in this tab here and it will all flow through to the front sheet. The reason that I chose to do this in Excel is because there's automatic formulas that you can set up. It'll all just flow through so you can do it in the back sheet. It's going to populate this tab here. Um, it's going to all do it for you. And also Excel is compatible with Google Sheets which is like a free online version of Excel. So you can upload all of this and it will keep your formulas and your formatting and everything for you. So you can access it from anywhere because Google Sheets is an online tool so I can look at it on my computer, on an iPad, my parents can look at it on their computer, so you can access it from anywhere. Um, so it's very convenient and hence why I'm using Excel. It will also work in numbers for Mac if you have a Mac computer. So if you don't want to rewatch this tutorial with the instructions, there is an instructions tab as well. I've done an example here and you will get this example if you want a copy of these spreadsheets, the links down below. So you get this example and then you also get the fresh clean one where you can put in whatever um, figures are suitable for you. You can also type over all of these labels. So if you don't have a children's playroom, you could put craft room or whatever you need there. Um, and you can change it on the back tab up here as well. So at the top, we've got the expenses that you need to pay, but they're not really applicable to a certain room or zone. So things like paying the architect, you would put that up here. Um, because this is kind of like a peaceful renovation where you just, well, for fast, we're just saying, okay, you know, builder, can you do this? So we don't really need to pay for an architect or any of this sort of stuff, so I've just put not applicable. Um, same with financing costs. It's the home that my parents live in. It's not one that they're um, renovating for profit or like buying with the purpose of flipping it, so we don't really care about the loan interest because they're going to pay that anyway. And then down here, we've got all the different tabs. So I've got the 18 room zones. I've also got another there. And then if you didn't want to um, allocate all your costs by room, you can just use these two. So you might have some small items, so maybe you want to change out a couple of light fittings in your house, but then your large items, maybe you want to put in a pool or whatever you want to do, like you can separate it that way. So I personally prefer to do by room, but you can also use small or large items if that's um, easier for you. In the notes here, you can put whatever you want. If you see this little red triangle, I've put some comments in there to help you. So this one, my suggestion is that you could put the room dimensions in, and then if you had an iPad, you could take this with you to the shop, and you could be the person at the carpet place, okay, so these are the rooms that I need the carpet for these are the dimensions and they can do your quote and it's just extra handy space to put any comments that you want in there um, like maybe this is your priority so you want to put that in there like a ranking system you know there's priority one next is the bathroom whatever you want to put there now these colors here correspond with the graph I've got over here so if you put a number in the back sheet of ensuite it will flow through to here and then it will start showing on the little pie chart here and they're all color coded as well I don't know if you can see that like the green for the ensuite so yeah it's all linked and it will automatically update for you which is super convenient and down the bottom here we've got the total bill cost we've got the budget the actual and the difference so you can see if you're over or under budget we've added a contingency i personally recommend to do 10 percent you can get rid of the contingency if you don't want it you would just delete that out up to you um you can change it to five percent too as well if you think 10 percent is too much and then down the bottom, it'll do like your grand total. And we can see that we're actually over budget and you can decide if you want to reduce some things or not um, up to you. So on each of these tabs is um, a breakdown. So in the external renovation, these are some of the things that are applicable for us. And then you can put in the quantity. So we need like 50 square meters of paving. This is how much we think it will cost. Maybe you go to the shop or you get a quote. Actually, it's going to cost a bit more or you decide, you know what, let's not get like gravel or something. Let's do proper paving. So that's going to cost a little bit more. So it will track what you budgeted, what the actual was and the difference. Very similar to this front tab here with the budget actual difference. And then you can put the supplier if you file the receipt, because um, obviously you want to want to be keeping on top of all of that and making sure you're not forgetting to pay any expenses. And then there's another notes column as well. And I've put some little comments here where you can put in like the SKU code or any details about the brand of the specific item or anything like that. 
And on each of these tabs, you'll also find um, subtotal for the materials or like the items and then add on the labor structural requirements and any repairs or prep work that's needed. So maybe you need to grout back like the floor, grind back the floor um, to make it ready to give a new floor covering. So that kind of stuff would go down here. Then we've got the subtotal for the build. You can add the contingency again and then you'll see the total. And for this one, we can see we're over budget by about $1,350. And that transfers through to here with those figures. Then for the kitchen, I've pre-populated with things applicable to the kitchen. Same formula down the bottom here with the labor, structural, contingency, etc. And then we've got the ensuite, the main bathroom. This one, I went a bit more detailed, so I'll just quickly show you. So if you are keeping some things of the existing, so my parents kept the existing exhaust fan because it was fine, was in good condition, um, they decided that they probably didn't need to paint the ceiling. The paint was already okay. So they just made this a wish list item, you know, keep the existing blinds. So you can put comments like that in there or you could just delete the whole row if you didn't need it. So you just click over here, right click delete and it will go. You can also hide the rows if you don't need them or you don't need these blank ones. If you left click and drag and then press hide, they will disappear. You can type over the top of any of these. If you don't like some of the pre-filled categories that I've done, type whatever you want in there. You can put whatever you want for the budget cost, you, whatever quantity. If you need three, just type in three and it will all um, update as you saw just then. And what in the supplier, so maybe it's like Reese plumbing or whatever, again with the receipt file. So it's, it's detailed, but it's not like overwhelming over the top detail. It's everything you need and like nothing extra. I've tried to keep it Detail without being too much, if you know what I mean. Then in here, I've got bedroom one, so maybe you're touching the closets, and I've got this pre filled as well. Maybe you don't need any homewares, so you can just leave that blank. And then things like if um, the builder doesn't want to itemize their coat with labor or anything, then I'll just put included. So you can see down here, labor I've just put included. Um, so you can do it that way as well, because I know not all of them will itemize it. Here's one, maybe you're only touching the window coverings. So bedroom three, four, five. If you don't have five bedrooms, you can just type over the top and put whatever zone you want in there. There's also study, living room, dining room, entry and stairs, laundry and linen cupboard, garage, basement, children's playroom. And then this is like the miscellaneous category. You can put whatever you want in there. Maybe you've got a granny flat. You could use it for that instead. Now, this is what I was talking about with the small and the large items back on this summary tab. So if you don't want to break things down in so much detail for each room or zone, or you know you just want to get a few like photo frames here and there, you're not sure what uh, room you want to put them in, you just know that you want to display like your wedding photo or whatever, you can put that in here. Um, then you can have the dates items needed by, budget quantity needed, the cost, and then supplier date paid. So you can read that. You can still allocate it to a zone if you want to, and same with the large items. So if you don't want to go through all the detail of going through each tab like this, you can just use this one and this one here. Um, the reason I don't recommend using all of them is because you're probably going to start to have some overlaps. You might have some small items that are just general, but then you've also allocated it to a room. So you don't want to be doing that just to make sure you're not doubling up. Then we have the payments tracker. So if you're paying various people or you've got some interest-free period on something, you're buying this furniture from that shop and the carpet's from there and it's all sort of all over the place, you're not sure who's been paid, um, this is what you would use this tab for. So we can see we've got the bathroom, we've got to pay the builder, we've got the invoice number, all those details. If there's a deposit, when the deposit's due, you can add in the date, so maybe like 12th of the 12th, um, date the deposit was paid, maybe you paid that on the 11th of the 12th. And then the final invoice amount where you could be like, okay, the cost less the deposit that I've paid. So you can fill out all these details and also if the quote's only valid for a certain period of time. And if you wanted to compare um, quotes, I've got that later on in the tabs. So here, renovation wish list. Um, similar to these spending trackers in here, so you could always just copy and paste it over once you have actually brought it. This purpose of this one is to compare the cost. So if there's a couple of stores that sell similar things or you like chairs from different stores, you can populate them for up to three shops. Get the average price. You can see is that going to be under or over our budget. Maybe you should be looking at less expensive um, chairs. So it's just to help you stay on budget, keep track of your wish list and if you want to you can type over the top of this so maybe store one is amart maybe store two is freedom or whatever you want to put in there 
um, whichever shop you can add that in. You can also put in the URL link. So if you know, okay, this is the chair that I want, um, you can just drop the URL link in so it's easy to find later on. And I found that's especially helpful when I've gone to my parents, I think this chair would look good. And they've gone, well, I think this chair would look good. And everyone can be updating this spreadsheet, um, putting in the URL links. If you want to do multiple lines of text in Excel, you can just type your first line and then I always get confused if it's shift enter or alt enter. Type and then just left click and drag here. Okay, yeah, so it's alt. So if I just expand that down and show you again, so I've got two lines of text, alt enter, and now I can type the next line. So alt enter is the shortcut. And then if you're buying it, yes or no, then you can put a Y or, a, or an N in there, another notes column. So that's the wish list. Then we've got the program. So who is responsible for what? Maybe you're buying your own furniture and someone needs to be there for the furniture delivery. What date has that been booked in for? You can add that in here. Um, when is the builder coming back and forth? Like if you're working and trying to manage this renovation while you're working, what days do you need to be at home or what days do you maybe need to go in late because the builder will be there in the morning. So you can keep track of all those dates that they've told you because um, I know when you've got a lot and my mum had a bad habit of putting it on a scrap piece of paper. I'm like, no, stop doing that. Let's put it in a spread sheet keep it nice and organized um, you can keep track of who's responsible if it's ahead or behind schedule when it was actually completed because if they're there going we want payment you can be like actually um, you haven't finished putting in the tower rails so you know we're not paying you because you're not finished yet so that's helpful for that paint colors um, my parents decided to paint the bottom level of the house and then they were going to come back and do the top level later on. So I'm like, well, let's keep track of what paint color you use so we can get that paint color again because, I mean, it's white. But there's like a 100 different shades of white. It's like, which white was it? So that's why we've recorded that in here, um, just the brand and all those details. And then here, the contacts. So this is where we've been tracking um, the quotes we've been getting from various people. So maybe you had a quote from three different bathroom people. You could put that down here. The tasks you want them to do. So maybe you want um, one person to install um, the light fittings, but then you've got someone else coming and installing like a feature light or whatever. You you know what I mean? Like anything you can you can split it out into as much detail as you want. Anything that's piecemeal here and there. Um, but the quotes, things that are included, things that are specifically excluded. So. Um, my parents, the, when they did the bathroom, the door, painting the doors was excluded. So make sure they put that in here. And you can also consider that. It's like, okay, well, this person's included that. This one hasn't. You know, is that cost too high? Should we get them to add that in? <clears throat> so it's just helpful to keep track of everything that's included and excluded, especially if then there's an argument where the contractor's like, no, that wasn't in my scope. And you can be like, well, actually, like it's on your quote. So yeah, it is. Um, it's just helpful for reference, especially if you're juggling a lot of different um, contractors doing bits and pieces here and there. Payment terms, so you know, okay, this person needs 30 days, so we need to pay them by, you know, the 29th day or whatever. The date they can start, so maybe you don't want to wait, so you can, if you had three lines of different quotes, you'd be like, this person can start now, this one in two weeks, do we want to pay extra to start sooner? So it just helps you do some comparison, and then if you are actually proceeding with them, to be like, who did I pick again? You can put like, yes, no, yes, whatever, whoever it was. So that is how we've been using the spreadsheets. I have ordered it so that it goes the budget first and then all of the costs. But if you wanted to, like in the initial planning phase where you are just tracking down those quotes, you can left click and drag over and put that so you see that first because I do know that you need to scroll a little bit. You can also change, um, if you double left click, you can change the tabs. Maybe you just go pay tracker and then you can see the rest. Maybe you already know it's renovations. Maybe you just want to call it wish list. Now you can see more tabs. So you can customize it to um, your liking. So that is how these renovation spreadsheets work. They have been a huge help for my parents' renovation. Um, it would have been all over the place. And I'd be like, well, I don't know what like chairs you picked. And then there was emails going back and forth. And it's just... It was, it was very messy until I did these spreadsheets. They have saved a lot of time. Um, I will have the link down below to Google Sheets if you wanted to have a look at that. It's free. I'll also have the link to these spreadsheets. Um, if you want to get a copy, link will be down below. And if you're only doing um, kitchen or bathroom, I have those tabs separately. If you just want to get those tabs and none of these other um, tabs in the spreadsheet, then you can purchase those individually as well. I'll have those links. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, just put a comment below if you have any more queries and I'll see you in the next video.